CataractCoach.com, a scleral tunnel for radial keratotomy eyes. Now, this patient has so many RK cuts that a typical corneal incision is just simply too risky. So here's a case start to finish, complete cataract case here. Notice how I make that paracentesis between two RK cuts. And because that's small, it's narrow, less than a millimeter or about a millimeter wide, you can fit it between those two RK cuts without intersecting them. And I put some lidocaine inside the eye. Here comes some viscoelastic to get the AC nice and deep and protect that, the intraocular structures like the corneal endothelium. But now it's time for a pyridomy. Now we have to open up the conjunctiva here because we're going to do a little scleral tunnel. So I'm sitting superiorly here on this eye, and this is a right eye. And you can see we're using the, the 0.1 forceps and some scissors to create a pyridomy here. Now a little bit of cautery going on. Now we sped the whole video up to about two times normal speed. This case in real life took me about 11 minutes. But we speed it up twice to normal speed, and now we get the whole thing viewed for you in just about five so scleral tunnel is a half scleral depth groove right here. And using that crescent blade to stay within that groove, half scleral depth is our goal, remember. And advance it, and notice the angle of the, the crescent blade is angled upwards, right from that incision of the limbus towards the root of the cornea. And I want to just barely get the tip of that instrument into the clear cornea so we can see it. Now I'll switch over to a diamond keratome. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to go inside there so you don't create a new path. I want to use the existing path. And now we can enter the AC and widen that up to about 2.2 millimeters or so. So that's our incision for the surgery, a scleral tunnel. So you definitely know how to need to learn how to do that. Now we'll get our rexes done here. You can see this is part's the easy part of the surgery. Good red reflex here. The two purple ink marks are indicating approximately the correct meridian that we're going to place the lens. It is going to be a torque lens. The black dots in the cornea are just the cardinal axes, you know, 90 degrees and also 180. So there's a nucleus out of the partial, uh, capsule bag partially. Just chop, chop, and more chop, and just emulsify it down. Again, this is not the hard part of the surgery. Be careful, though. You know, during this part of the surgery, I tend to use a lower infusion pressure. I don't want to put too much stress on those RK cuts. And then, of course, we want to be very cautious and not inadvertently rupture the posterior capsule. With cortex removal coming up next, put that eye probe in the eye. You can really see, as we get a good red reflex here, all those RK cuts. There are really a lot of these RK cuts in this patient. And we'll clean up that capsule bag nice and easy. That looks great. Fill up the bag, and we'll get our torque monofocal lens in there. Now, lens calculations are not normal in RK eyes like this, especially with this many cuts, so you need to do some homework. On cataractcoach.com, yes, you'll have to leave the YouTube site, but when you go to cataractcoach.com, there are a lot of videos that actually show you my way of doing the calculations here. Look, I'm giving you all my secrets already. Just take them. Take them already. So now at the end here, you can see the lens is in good position, overlapped by the, the rexus. Time to put a 10 nylon in. Now, could you leave this scleral tunnel alone and unsutured? For sure. It's a small incision. It'll seal. It's already not leaking. But, you know, I would rather just put the suture in here and have zero risk or minimal risk. And so we'll put that 10 nylon inside there and close that incision. And then once we do that, we can tie this up. You want the anterior chamber pressure basically normalized at a normal IOP when you tie these sutures down so that you can get appropriate amounts of tension. So there's the, the suture going down there. Looks like a 311 approach. And once that's done, we can close the conjunctiva here. And so this patient's surgery was done a um, couple months ago, a month or two ago, and the patient did great. I'm one of these out-of-town patients who flew into Los Angeles for me to do the surgery. And you know what's funny? Today, I'm recording the audio today. Today is about a month or maybe two months after this patient's surgery here. But today, I had four patients with prior RK, and all four of them needed scleral tunnels for 16, 18, and 24 cut RK. And there was another that had, like, uh, another one that 18 cuts. And so I'm used to doing these scleral tunnels for these patients. You really want to get this technique down. Very useful to have. Now, could you have done a corneal incision? Listen, you can do anything you want to do. I just want to avoid any further risk. And I don't want to be blamed should anything happen in that cornea. I didn't touch it. So as you can see, we closed the main suture, the incision with a 10 nylon suture. And this is using an 8 Vicryl of some design or another. Looks like there's a little loop in there, but we'll just tighten it down. 
This Vicro suture on the surface is, of course, temporary. It's only going to last, I know, maybe a couple of weeks, if we're lucky, maybe even a month. But after that, it's going to dissolve on its own and break apart, and it'll wash out in the patient's tear film. So here we go, tying this suture down, and we'll call this a case called done. So beautiful case here. I hope you learned something. And for sure, you got to know how to do a scleral tunnel.